Hey everybody, welcome back to Uplink by Long Island Retro Gaming. In this video we're going to go over how to set up a controller with Parsec and how to start gaming with Parsec. We support a variety of different controllers. The easiest to set up is the Xbox 360 Wired and Nintendo Switch Pro Wired controllers. They both have USB connectors, so you're just going to plug them right into your computer. Xbox One and DualShock 4 controllers can both be plugged into your computer using a micro USB cable. Plug one end into your computer and plug the other end into your controller. Let, Let me, me show you. you. So the DualShock 4 controller has a USB connector right on the top here. I already have a micro USB um, cable connected to my computer. We're just going to plug it right in. You're going to see the light turns on and you know that it's connected. The Xbox One controller is more or less the same. So we're just going to plug the USB cable into the top of the uh, Xbox One controller. You're going to see the light turns on, letting you know that it's connected. So if you want to use a wireless controller, we do have some options for you. Um, the Xbox 360 wireless controller does need a wireless adapter. It looks like this. Um, if you do want to use an Xbox 360 wireless adapter, um, please refer to the manual that came with it um, as far as setting it up. But for the most part, you just plug it in, um, press the sync button on the top here, and press the sync button on the 360 controller, and it should sync up fine. Um, Xbox One controllers, there's two different generations. Um, the first generation, um, you will need to use an Xbox One wireless adapter. Um, it looks like this, but the newer Xbox One controllers can be uh, used over Bluetooth. Um, let me show you how you can tell the difference between an original first generation Xbox One controller and a newer Xbox One controller. So the newer Xbox One controllers, which is the one that I have right here, it's got the whole face of the controller is, is pretty much one piece of plastic. And, and you want to look at the, the pieces surrounding the Xbox guide button. It's one piece of plastic. That's how you know you have a Bluetooth-enabled Xbox One controller. You can see on the picture here, this is an Xbox One Bluetooth-enabled controller. It's just got that one piece of plastic around it. And then the first-generation Xbox One controllers have a separate piece of plastic around the Xbox Guide button. So remember, if you have an original first-generation Xbox One controller, you're going to have to use a wireless adapter. Um, however, if you have a newer one, we can use Bluetooth, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Um, so both the DualShock 4 and the newer Xbox One controllers you can you can use Bluetooth with. Um, first things first, make sure that your computer is Bluetooth enabled. Um, mine is, so we're just going to go into the search bar on the bottom left here, and we're going to type in Bluetooth. And we're going to hit enter. We're going to hit add Bluetooth or other devices. And then we're going to have to put the controllers in pairing mode. So the first we'll do the DualShock 4 controller. So to put this in pairing mode, you're going to hold the share button and then hold the PlayStation button. Now you're going to see the top light is going to start blinking. That means that it's in pairing mode. Back to the computer, we're going to click Bluetooth. It's going to start searching. Wireless controller, there it is. So we're going to click it. It's going to connect, and congratulations, our PS4 controller is connected. Now, for the Xbox One Bluetooth-enabled controllers, um, we're just going to hold the top button. There's a sync button right there. Uh, well, first we're going to turn it on, then we're going to hold the sync button. You're going to see it's going to start flashing. We're going to click Add Bluetooth or Other Device again, hit Bluetooth. Give it a second to find it. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time. Uh, it's probably this input here, so we're going to click input. It's going to connect. All right, and now it's setting it up. We're going to hit done. And once you see the controller light is um, not flashing, you know it's set up. All right, um, so that's pretty much how you set up any of the controllers. So now I'm, I'm going to show you how to use Parsec. 
Um, so one thing to note, um, to make sure that your controller is compatible with Parsec, all the controllers I showed you are compatible, but we're going to go ahead and open up the Parsec client. Um, again, you could just click the little up arrow and double click the Parsec logo here. And then in the Parsec uh, window, we're going to click settings and we're going to click gamepad. And it's going to show you if you have a gamepad connected. So I have the Xbox One controller connected via Bluetooth. Now, if I press buttons, you can see that it's corresponding um, in Parsec. So we know that this is working. So we can go ahead and close this. And we're going to open up the Uplink website. So the website might look slightly different um, when the event goes live, but it's going to look something like this. We're going to have a bunch of games that you can choose from. So all we're going to do is we're going to pick a game like, hmm, let's try Mega Man 3. We're going to click the cartridge. It's going to open up another window. And we're going to click the blue button in the middle here. Play RetroArch with Uplink 1. All right, we're connected. So you can see the controller is working good, the game's playing great, very responsive, and uh, life is good. So when you're ready to disconnect, you're just going to move your mouse to the top left here. You're going to click the little Parsec logo, and you're going to click disconnect. It's going to disconnect you from that machine. We're going to close this Parsec window here, and this one as well. Um, and then you can play something else. Now, it's worth noting that Parsec does support multiplayer. Um, so let's say, for example, Double Dragon 3 is a multiplayer game. We're going to go into that. So we're just going to click the cartridge, click the blue button, and it's going to put us right in. Um, so the first thing that I want to show you is how to see if somebody else is in the room. So if you just click the Parsec button on the top, right, uh, top left here, sorry, um, under guests, it shows you everybody that's in the room. So Rocco Dog, that's me. Um, if it showed somebody else in there in addition to yourself, then you know uh, you know there's somebody else in there with you, um, and you could play multiplayer. Um, Double Dragon Three, I think the second player could just hit the start button um, to join. Um, but other games might have to be backed out to the menu to start a multiplayer mode. Um, you can also click the chat button here. Um, that'll bring up a chat window. And you can chat with other people in the room. So if you want to play something multiplayer, you can just say, hey, want to play with me. Or something like that. And they can communicate back with you. Um, and so that's how you play multiplayer. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Um, so now we're going to click the Parsec button and we're going to go ahead and disconnect. We're going to close the Parsec window here. Close the page. And that's pretty much it. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, I hope it wasn't too confusing with all the controllers. But, uh, but yeah, we hope you enjoy Uplink. Thanks again.